Are you a professional pillow fighter? Or a 9 to 5 low cost time travel agent? Or maybe real estate sales on Mars is your profession? It doesn't matter. Whatever it is you do, however complex or intricate, Monday.com can help you organize, orchestrate, and make it more efficient. Monday.com is the one centralized platform for everything work related. And with Monday.com, work is just easier. Monday.com, for whatever you run. Go to Monday.com to learn more. Well, I don't see the point in waiting any longer. So let's bring around the star attraction, the one you came to see. Ladies and gentlemen, the one, the only, Ms. Judy Gold. You end up going to this college called Brown, um, which yes. I've never heard yes. of. And the same. so were you the were you the valedictorian of your class in high school? Of my high school? Yeah. Um, no, but I was I was a good painter. So I got into Brown because of my painting. So no, really? I, yeah, 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 yeah. So I hide my light under a bushel all the time, but like I can paint. And so that's paint? how I got into paint? Brown. I usually paint narrative. I love to paint like a scene, um, uh, city life. Uh, I like photorealism, things like that. Like, yeah, that's that's me. I love that. Yeah. Do you yeah, do yeah, portraits yeah. or anything or no? I could do portraits. I've just never done them before. I've, did you? I've just, yeah. Did you ever make money painting? I never. No, I never sold a piece. I just, I just loved doing it, and I was like, "Oh, this is great." My so, dad bought all my pieces once in a while. Oh, I love him. So you you went in for painting. Did you did you get a degree in art, or did you switch majors, or? So, I switched majors and I studied business economics because I thought I was going to go to Wall Street. And um, wait, so you and, go in for painting and then you switch? I mean, like, and you switch to business economics? Like, what the fuck is that? That's like, I love economics and markets and things like that, ugh, and I oh always love that. I don't, but no, wait, come back. That's but a Jew painting. thing. It's a Jew thing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the daughter of a tax attorney, so. Um, oh really? But, oh my gosh! Let's yeah. talk about statements of cash flow. No, and, uh, my father was a, a lawyer and a CPA. I, I don't. I can't. I got a D in accounting in college. Okay, so. Oh, no. I find that a lot of comedians are musicians, and then yes. um, because of the timing and the rhythm. Okay, and and yet I've recently found a bunch of comedians who paint and draw like I yeah. and I often use this you know I, I have a new book out yes I can say that when they came for the comedians were all in trouble and so <laughs> when when I describe what we do like that we are the only art form where you you, you know people see a work in progress mm -hmm. and and inform us whether something's funny or not or where <laughs> the line is you know but I often think you know like a painter never paints like a tenth of a painting and then brings an audience in front and, and says like, <laughs> right? Do I put the tree here? Do I, what do you guys think? <clears throat> no, it's actually the, the most amazing part is that you get to, you know, it, it's your own company and you, I've never been so focused and so like self-contained um, and self-possessed as when I'm painting, but at the same time, I fucking love an audience, you know? And right. I, I, I mean, it's, it's not, it's, it's honestly not apples and oranges. It was just that, like, uh, when I got to school, I was honestly, I wanted to do something that um, I thought that I wanted, I just got turned on by, by like, this economics course I took. And I, and I, and oh I kept God, painting, like, on the side. I was beautiful. always taking art classes. I never had the same people in my class, which was nice. Right. You know? So it was like, you'd meet a lot of, different people, which I kind of like. I think in the, then in my comedy, I like to talk about like socioeconomic things, things right, that aren't right. specifically about race, but are, but, but you're like, oh, okay, wait a minute. Social a minute. commentary. Can, yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So like I, I talk about like apple picking, I go out with a, you know, I'm with a white, they don't tell you how much apple picking is involved. You know, like she asked me to go apple picking with her on our third date. I was like, I'm black. We picked everything we're going to pick, but like, you go out there and it's a good time. Right. Like, you know, like, but it's like you're playing cosplay. Right. right. About, you know what I'm saying? Like, 
like being like a Mexican migrant right, worker. Right, right. But, but, but you know what? But, but people like it. And you know who really loves it is like, is educated, well to do East Coasters. Right. Like, I know. When it. people are like, like out for in right. the fall, people are always like, oh, we're going apple picking. I'm like, ew. Like, just, <laughs> I know. <laughs> <laughs> Right, exactly. So it's, it's like it would be like if we went, yeah, if I went, you know, we're going to go sewing. We're going to go to the garment district. We're going to, you know, <laughs> we're going to slice meat. Well, we're going to go to the meat slicing thing. Yeah. So you graduate, Brown. You become a copywriter, right? Yes. Was that right yes. away? So that was right away. There was a lady that was coming to, and, and that's probably like, part of going to Brown is like this lady was walking around Brown's campus, literally recruiting people to work in advertising. And, and so it was with the biggest ad agency in the world, McCann Erickson. And I got a summer internship and then I, and then I wrote for them and I was always trying to bring in the best comedians for commercials. Did you have did to I audition? have to audition for for commercials? Like, did you have to? No, no. Well, did I, you have I, to write do a writing sample for the copywriting job? No. Or were they like, oh, they go to Brown? We just don't. Yeah. Yeah, they're like rubber stamp. It, that's fine. People go okay. to they go to advertising school. So I learned on the job, but it was cool. I learned a lot, and that's what I like about myself is that I'm an autodidact. I read everything from like Leo Burnett to you know to to you name it. Um, shy at days like right uh take on 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 advertising and got in 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 a summer i i i'd read all like a, a lion's share of the books i worked on that for like five years i tried so hard to get comedians that became legends into commercials and right. the people at the ad agencies would ne- they they never they just didn't get it well so, i was just gonna so. say you know i've gone on never done a commercial but i am always called in always they're like can you just improvise uh mm-hmm. here like, like do it this way and then do it in your own word and then i watch the commercial i'm like i wrote that you fuckhead <laughs> that's exactly what it is that's exactly what it is and and they'll be like a this person type and i'm like just take that person and that'll be fine i remember we were like um it was, it was, uh, there was an ad I was coming up with for Coca-Cola and it was just like two cans talking and I wanted Patrice O'Neill and I wanted Dimitri Martin and, and one was going to be diet and one was going to be regular Coke. Right. And it was, it was just in Patrice. Oh, that would have been great. Yeah. yeah. They were like, who are these people? We have no idea who they are. Like, we're just, I was like, they're, trust me, they're funny. They're, they're, they're great. Like they, they. Who did it, they end up getting? Was, Fuckhead one and fuckhead two. I have no idea who they booked. It's always it, it, it the same nowhere. people. Yeah. It's always yeah. the same people. Yeah, it went nowhere. And and you know what? That's why I wanted out. So I, I loved the job because there's so few things that in New York City can afford a young black man a damn near six figure salary when he's graduated from college. It was something that gave me confidence and gave me a chin up in a town that does not, you know, doesn't do that quite often. Like, did you, you have to like fucking knock it out of the park. Did you that. experience any racism while you were a copywriter? When I was a copywriter, um, doors were definitely shut. So, um, uh, and, uh, you know, advancement was limited, so to speak, but there was never any direct or hostile, I would say like hostile racism. There was definitely like, you could tell by the numbers there was never a black CEO or right, a, bl- right, right, a black right. person in the C-suite. I mean, I can tell you that, but they were sweet as, you know, they were the sweetest molasses, but like there was never a black person in the C-suite, which told me that it was either up to me, right? Or like, it, or it wasn't going to happen. And I didn't want to stick around that badly. I wanted to do stand up, So I saved my money and then I just, then I got out. Do you prefer i mean it's a ridiculous question please the overt versus the manipulative yeah 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 yeah, yeah. that's a good question i mean and it's my eyes have just been open to the manipulative right just as like a lot of people's have because because you you don't want to believe it like you don't want to believe it and yet yeah because because but you know like black people are not we see a lot but we're not truth 
tellers. You know, we're not right. like mystical truth tellers. We, d- you know, we can be as, you know, not woke as other people. Right. You know? So like, and there's certain- That's like, what's wrong things. with pigeonholing people. Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, and I, I will say this, like I had to wake up after George Floyd's death as well. And like, uh. you know, speak to, you know, and like, have an inventory of what was going on in my own life, my own head, my own POV, all my own experiences and all that. And um, I do, I would say that sometimes I mistook like uh, systemic racism or whatever you want to call it for people, you know, you know, if they weren't overtly calling me like the N bomb, um, then they weren't racist, you know? Like, right. if they didn't have hostility, like, yeah, yeah, they weren't raging. I mean, they're not racist. They're meant, hey, everybody's a little bit racist, you know, like, right. I, and just like taking that all in and never seeing that maybe that there's like, there's a huge, you know, construction that I'm not aware of that if I triple wire somehow, then people go off. But you do know? you like, think that's because... I, I, I just, yeah. Because you really grew up w- with two very successful yes. parents. You yes. went to, you know, you sort of l- grew up a charmed kid, you yes. know, like you yes. had a charmed yes. life. So, you know, when Ben calls me and tells me some of the guys on the team's life stories, I mean, he's yeah. like, mommy, I, I just want to help. I mean, it's, yeah. it's unbelievable. So you were sort of, shielded from it but then you get into show business this really i just i cannot believe this story what's that you went to the first new york comedy mixer and a daily show writer says to you we tried a black guy once but it didn't work Mm. out yes 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 i i will i will not reveal who that was just just to just, is the person just, still working? I'm sure. <laughs> I'm sure they are still working. It was a dumb thing. And it was a dumb thing for, for you know, them to say. And it was a dumb thing for me to be gaslit by that. And Because at the time, I always felt that, like, if you spoke up, then you were, you know, they'd have you thinking that there was something fundamentally wrong with you. Right. You know, that, like... But this is, dude, this is like La Casa Nostra. Don't make trouble. You'll get what you want. Right. That's not true. Right. That's not true at all. And I'm sure it's been your experience as well. That if somebody says some, you know, like some just total horse shit, some insensitive horse shit where you're like, the, you know, I'm always like, the bar for me is so low. Right. Like, like I'm giving you lots of wiggle room. And you're still, you know, like. Yeah, you're, exactly. You're still, you know. Like, I, I often, me, you know? I talk yeah. about, you know, in my book and, and all the time, you know, when I talk to young female comics, but I used to call the clubs in the eighties, you know, before I had a manager, you know, we used to just call up bookers and be like, can I, can I work your room? And I cannot tell you how many times I would call and say, listen, I just did, you know, evening at the improv or Caroline's comedy hour. And I'd love to come in. And they're like, oh, we had a woman here two months ago and she didn't do well. So you know, we're not hiring women. I was like, that's, that's exactly what it is. But you know what? It created, what, what was created, you know, tokenism creates a bottleneck, right? So even if they had one guy, they don't want to try it again. Maybe they, years later, they start doing one, you know, taking one. But when you are fighting for one, that is so much different than staffing. The, 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 the reality of white writers uh, uh, in their process in hiring versus uh, writers of color is so stark and so different. I could go on all day. Yeah. But it's usually for one position, G. Right. And, I know it's the same with women. Position. It's yeah. the same with women. Yeah. It so oh. fucking pisses me off. This episode is brought to you by Progressive Insurance. You chose to hit play on this podcast today. Smart choice. Make another smart choice with AutoQuote Explorer to compare rates from multiple car insurance companies all at once. Try it at Progressive.com. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company and Affiliates. Not available in all states or situations. Prices vary based on how you buy. 
You yeah. auditioned for the twofer role on 30 Rock five times? I did. I did five times. If it at the sixth one, I should have done laser lights. I think I would have gotten it. So what um, happened? I, like you yeah. didn't you think you were gonna you get it? What? Like people it don't way. I understand that, but five fucking times, like when I go in once and then they're like, oh, yeah. they're going to call you back. And then you go back and they're like, oh, they really like you. They just want to like maybe three times, maybe I'm like five <laughs> fucking times. I had, I definitely had a nervous breakdown after that. When I didn't get it, I had a, um, I, I guess like, yeah, an episode. Yeah. And um, it really, it was, I was super, supremely depressed after couldn't get out of bed um it was it's something to have your failure broadcast um on tv and in syndication night after night and you're thinking about all the missed opportunity and you know that's just a lot it's a lot and you know it you know it's like you know oh like, yeah i like, had yeah yeah, yeah. It's comedy is just rejection yeah it's 90 and the fact that it's so personal, it's such a personal art form, it's like personal rejection. You know what I mean? It's like, yes. they're not only saying, uh, well, you're too tall or whatever. It's like, oh, and, and my act, you know, it's like, it's horrible. I, I went into a very bad clinical depression in 2010. It was awful. It took, I really, mm. it really took me about two years to get out of it, two and a half years. But I wow. was up for, I did a pilot for this, it was like The View, and everyone thought, oh, the show's going to go. And then Sarah Gilbert yeah. takes the idea and the set and everything and does a show called The Talk. And I, and that wow. gets picked up instead. And I was like, I, I mean... Oh when God. am I going to catch a fucking... And I really thought, yeah. you know, because in your head you think... Wow, the hard work's paying off. Wow, I'm gonna be okay. And then boom. And it's yeah. just like, and it's a, it becomes a, oh, it's, this business fucking sucks. All right, so <laughs> sorry for bringing that up. No, you know, no, no, no. It, no, it's, it's okay because you know what? I look at those past rejections and I think, and, and I'm like, those are not going to define me. Right. I'm going to do better than, than this you right. know? And, and get past. And you have to be oh like, God. it wasn't meant to be. <laughs> um, <laughs> this really, really freaked yeah. me out. This yeah. story yeah. that um, on the Colbert report, you rapport, you yeah. played Alan. Stephen's black yes. friend. Yeah. I mean, I look at, I love Colbert. I mean, that they had to have an actor placed in his best, his, his, his black friend, like that they had to hire someone to play right. his, like that, that in itself, yeah. like. He, he, didn't, he didn't have anybody that he could call himself. I feel as though there's, I mean, it, it points to the fact that there's a huge, even then, and, and as there is now, it's just a blind spot with well-meaning white people, especially in comedy, you know? Like, they feel as though they're going to battle it out with the foes from across the aisle without ever taking into account, you know, whatever, that, that they could have some, some weaknesses as well and some foibles and, like, and, you know, it, it just stood out to me that, yeah, they had to hire me and call me in and they had to think of somebody to be the black friend. I don't know what Stephen Colbert's, you know, friend, friend network looks like, but, but there, there, was a, there was a writer who, who called me up, said, asked if I could do it, and I did. And I did it about four or five times. Then, then um, they were looking for a writer. So I wrote a packet. They said they didn't know who I was. I was like, I was the guy who played. I'm which Stevens. Was strange to me because they said I was, yeah. was a writer on the show. Yeah. Well, in it he says, and one of in one of the bits he goes, "That's a writer for our show. That's Alan." So, so on, the, I can play a writer, but I can't be a writer. It, we were just trying to get my 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 packet to the red to the read pile, and they were like, "Who is this guy?" And so. It, it, you know, I mean, 
whatever. It's, it's a lot of cognitive dissonance. I know, and I love Stephen Colbert too. Even after all this, I, I mean, love I love Stephen him. Colbert. I like, love his show. But, I love yeah. him. I, yeah. When I read that, I was like, how do, I would never say, can you play my black friend? Like, my, can you play my Latina friend? Like, no, I would never say that to any, you know, the fact that they this thought, is, what yeah. year was this? What year was this? This was 2005. It was like a different day. You know, and it was like, I was like, sure, I needed, I needed to work. I needed a of gig. Course, and I, of course, of course. I didn't really, I didn't think about those kind of things. And, you know, it's only now that I think that people are really doing the work and seeing that there's a certain toxicity to, to the status quo that we need to dispel and get rid of. And like doing small things, like not asking people to, play your black friend or whatever right, the fuck right, that right, means. Right. Then looking inward and saying, oh, I don't even know that many black people is like, is, is part of just, you know, resetting this whole thing, healing all the garbage. And just, yeah, that's, that's what I think it is. I really, you know, I had to like forgive him. I had to forgive myself because I then wrote an article about it, which got me in a lot of trouble. Oh, th- is that the uh, whitewashed yeah. comedy scene? And the yeah. Washington Post? Yeah. yeah, trouble. Think about how that gets you in trouble. But it's good trouble, right? Is right, it, That's of good trouble. Oh. But, you know? Lewis, yeah. But that's, but that's okay. But that's okay, you know, because I got in a lot of trouble. I got blacklisted for a lot, for, for that for a while. And, that, and, cl- and doors closed on me. But and, did you feel but, empowered by that? Or did you feel like, oh, fuck, I shouldn't have? But I felt like, oh, you fuck, I shouldn't have. Right. But now because that's what I was. Yeah. But now I feel well, back, good about it. My ex once said to me when I was in a situation like that, how would you feel if your kid, if your son, if Henry, you know, knew you just took that and didn't do mm. anything about it. And I was mm-hmm. like, yeah, right. That's true. I'd be, you know, I look, and it really, it's made me think a lot. You know, you have these children, especially like, you know, being a gay parent and the shit people say to you. Um, And I always correct them. Always say in a kind yet firm manner, don't ever say that to another gay person. That is uh, mm. not, you know, like, who's the real mother? We get that at the doctor's office or when, you know, and, like just ridiculous shit. Yeah, and I, I and it makes, shit. but it's you, I bet now you feel like, thank God I did that. But it was probably hell going through that. No, I, you never know who's reading it, which is awesome too. Because W. Kamau Bell. Oh, I love him. Years later, yeah. Years later was like, Hey man, I read that. And that's why he hired me to write on his show, you know? And it's like, uh, and, and then like recently Chris, uh, 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 let's see, Christina Lee, who's a producer in Hollywood mm-hmm. was like, I, you posted that again. I read it. I loved it. Please be on my podcast. And then I had like a writer from, from Veep reach out to me. You know, it's, it's, it's like, you don't know who's, listening it, and i and i and i'm I, you know i'm not all, i'm not an angel you know but I, I i do thank myself for having the integrity of just at least calling that out then you know i done a lot of dumb shit but i did the, i missed our meeting but i did that right you know um right right and right i think it's okay you know like um it, and it gives me like hope like now i like, mean don't you think instance, now, be, yeah, yeah. you'd be in a different situation had you not done that? I mean, like... Sure. You are I would have been, yeah. respected for that now. Yeah. After the time went by and people, you know... I mean, it's a good... I think it's a good thing you did that, even though you had to go through hell. Absolutely. No, I, and listen, I'm fine. I I, I have a good life. I, I think that what what not saying saying or speaking up does to you is makes you more of a bureaucratic cog right and then you lose a little bit of yourself because 
what people don't tell you is that the industry is actually just a giant bureaucracy. Right. And, and there, and it, and it takes a skill to manage it and to and, be able to negotiate it. And also it's a bureaucracy run by fucking immature high school kids who think they're cool. Exactly it, what it is. It is so. high school. It is high school. Oh, she's a burnout. Oh, <laughs> she's pop. Oh, she's a loser. Oh, she, she's <laughs> last year's. You, when you auditioned yeah. for SNL, you, um, yes, you did your Barack impression? I did, but I had too much hair. That's what, that's what, um, Lauren Michael said. And I was like, I'll cut it, but it was, it was too late. Um, so it was, it was fine. I was, I was so, I was just so happy to be there. I, I was like having the what best was time. it like? What you was know, it well, like auditioning? All right, because now, can I tell you, to, I a, yeah. when I was starting, you, you auditioned too. No, yeah. I, never, I mean, we used to have, they used to have auditions at the comic strip and Catch Rising Star. And literally it was like, most of the pe- com- comics that auditioned were just doing characters, you know? But it was like, Lauren was there. It was like eight, 807, 815, 823, you know? And it didn't matter. That was your only time. You, the audience could suck. Someone could spill a drink. Someone could have a heart attack. Someone could puke. The guy before you could bomb. That was your. That was it. That it was. was never, that was it. You live, and that's it. And that's how people. Yeah. And it was in the summer. And yeah, and that's how we audition. But now, what's the process like? Um, <laughs> the process at SNL is yeah. like you, you get. Um, you're given a contract to sign before you even audition, sign your life away. Um, you're put into one of the, like the, the, uh, the green rooms that they have guests in and things like that. It's you next door to, to the people that you're competing against. Luckily it was me and Donald Glover. Um, Donald and I knew each other. So we were just having a great time. And the person that went up before me, Judy bombed. So I felt good. I went up and it and was And you saw was the person? Yeah. You saw the person? I, I spied. I spied. And they totally bombed and it was fine. And you know, I'm horrible. I love someone to bomb before I go up so that I do. <laughs> I love, you know what I love? I'm horrible because I love when someone says the audience sucks. Then I can't yeah. wait to go on like, oh, really? <laughs> the audience sucks? All right, let's see. <laughs> they were so tight how they yeah. came all the way here wanting to yeah. laugh. Um, yeah, so, uh, so yeah, he was, it was like, cra- it was crazy. Wait, I, I didn't and ring it, the bell for Lauren. Okay. Yeah, it was, it was crazy. I, I, I didn't, okay, now I, I've just learned Lauren Miles yeah. too. But so, um, I didn't know, I didn't know how crazy it would be. It was totally fine. The, the entire cast was there. They watch you. You know, Keenan Thompson came up to me after, said I did a great job. Like, everybody said I did a good job. And so, it was like, I didn't get it. It's okay. You know the, you know the audition that I remember the most and will forever go, be burned go, 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 go. is the comedy seller. There was nothing like you had to remind me that I auditioned for SNL. The comedy seller was the most harrowing four minutes right. of my life. Right. Are you fucking kidding me for, I mean, SNL could have like, like changed whatever. Right. But right, right, right. this was like, SD had, okay. I go in, I've got the appointed time. I've got the appointed time. You, you know, you go see the Empress and then like, you know, I, I don't know. I'm like, people are kissing her cheek, her hand. I'm like, what the fuck is happening? So like, so I sit, she's like, sit down. So I sit down. Then there's Kirsten's there and, and, and Mosey's there. And she's like, you're going up tonight. She seems confused. I was like, oh my God, I, I got the email that I was supposed to go up. Is that still happening? You know? And then like, and then she's like, she's like, I slide into the table. She's like, can you not sit here for can you not sit here? I was like, oh my God, I sat at the table. Oh, oh my God. God. So then I do that. I'm fucking up. I'm fucking up, right? Did you want to so throw then, up? Of course I did. Are you kidding me? Oh, that's me? awful. To... Like you weren't allowed to, to sit at hand. the comics table? Yes. I mean, I, I, I respect all of it. You know, I respect all of it. I get it. I get it. I get it. And she's trying to get in your head, right? And she wants to see if you've got what it takes. So then Kirsten and Mosey, who are angels, descend on her. And just they're like, I can I can overhear them saying he's a good guy, he's a good comic, da da da. He just didn't know this and that, you know. Can't wait. You should to- totally go down and see him, you know. 
So I have my 1115 on a And you're on a already Thursday. paranoid. You're already paranoid. Already. Okay. So paranoid. 11.15 on a Thursday. I'm like mouth takeover because brain is gone. I go down. I've been, you know, just I'm doing it like I'm doing my routine four times a night for like weeks just to get ready for this. And I get applause breaks, murder, destroy. It's the funniest you'll ever be, right? She's still in the doorway at the end. I don't even hear the words she says, you know? She's just like, I just hear avails. I hear avails and I walk not to the left, but to the right out the door. Oh my God, you didn't go upstairs? Yeah. No way. Are you out of your fucking mind? Like, (laughs) I was just like, I couldn't, you know? I mean, I couldn't. But the next time I came back in, everybody's like, hey, kid, you lost your cherry and all that kind of stuff. But it's like, that was... That was a New York moment. Because that was that's like, all, yeah, it's like I'm in this community. I, pe- yeah. you know, it's uh, yeah. And by the way, there's nothing political about what Esty does. Right. If the crowd likes you, she doesn't say, "Well, um, for these reasons, I can't." Unless you're an asshole or something. Like that. Right. 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 For these reasons, I can't book you. She gauges the audience. She's looking at the audience. She takes you. You know. She takes that in and gives you the stamp. You know, that's all she wants is laughs at the club. Right. The rest is politics. Yeah. So I remember, you know, like I remember Manny, who used to own the comedy cellar. Now Noah, his son, owns it. And Esty, uh, can I tell you, Esty was hot. Like she was so beautiful. And she, um, she would sit in the, in the, every night she would sit smoking her cigarette at the back of the room yeah, and the and it wasn't full in the late eighties and early nineties. The, wow. the cellar yeah. was empty. I used to sit in the back with um, uh, Daryl Hammond. Uh, he yes. would go and he would. I would be like Daryl, do Phil, Phil, um, Donahue, do this, do that. Um, and we used to sit in the back and we'd all yell at each other, and it was just great. And now it's yeah. like a fucking oh my god! It's every it's room is packed. Yeah, yeah, every room's a zoo. It's given me confidence through the years. Right, audition. of course. And yeah. don't you feel like, you, you, you know, like I feel like I get in very big funks. Um, I get depressed. I get anxious. I call Gullman, Gary Gullman. Uh, <laughs> but I'm a sweetie. I love him. He's the greatest. But yeah. going in there, it's like going home. It's really like you walk in, you're like, hey, oh, who's here? Oh, I'm going to sit with my brother, my sister. You know what I mean? It's just. Absolutely. It really is. It's such a community. This week's episode of It's Judy Show with Judy Gold is sponsored by BetterHelp. And if you know me, which I think you do because you're listening to my podcast right now, you know that I am a big advocate for therapy. I think it benefits everyone. I think there's so many people who need it, who don't partake. It is so important for your emotional health and well-being. Therapy is fantastic. It is in every stretch of the imagination. And if you're thinking of starting therapy, please do it. But please give BetterHelp a try. It is entirely online. It's designed to be convenient. It's flexible. It suits your schedule. You fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist, and you can switch therapists anytime for no additional charge. I have switched therapists in my life. I've had many, many therapists and you know, sometimes it's not a great fit for you, but don't give up. Therapy is beneficial. You can learn about yourself. You can process and just be emotionally healthy. I'm telling you, do it. Better help is great because, you know, when I used to schlep to my therapist's office, it was so annoying. You have to do it and you sit there and you wait and then... It, I'm telling you, doing it online is fantastic. And BetterHelp is amazing. I know a lot of people have used it. So if you're thinking about therapy, go to betterhelp.com. Let the gratitude flow. This is gratitude month, people. So you need to let the gratitude flow with BetterHelp. Visit betterhelp.com slash Judy Gold, J-U-D-Y-G-O-L-D, today and you will get 10% off your first month. That's betterhelp, 
H E L P dot com slash Judy Gold. You're welcome. I have another question before we have our last two questions. Okay. How do you feel about Kamala Harris? I love Husband. I am, I am. Husband. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> Step kids. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Mamala, as her kids call her. Yes. Um, I I think she I think she was the pick all along. I think it was like I was like who else was going it, right. it, it, it was you know I I didn't see it being Elizabeth Warren only because they would have like nailed her on that stupid Pocahontas thing. Which, oh like, God, often, I can't. Makes me I know. Want to take hostages. And re- as long as Republican strategists are upset about it, which they are, because it's not Suzanne Rice, you know, like right. it's the one. It's it's out. She hasn't been here long enough. It's like how Obama got in in twenty in twenty right because if you have if you have thirty years of shit that they can bring up you know but they don't also they don't have it. I you know you think of all the other women who he was going you know considering they're all going to be in his cabinet like I think Pocahontas should be um, Secretary of Education <laughs> like get rid of Betsy DeVos and have Elizabeth oh, Warren oh my god yeah. And there's definitely an Anything. attorney general in there. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, there's a, mm-hmm. a secretary of state in there, Susan Rice. There is, you know, yeah. it's sad that it takes a, an old white guy to be like, all right, everyone calm down. I'll come in and take care of this. And that's know, exactly we, what happened. We need we need him as a conduit. But yeah. it's, it, and, and don't forget the Stacey Abrams of it all. You know, right. like, oh, I love where her. Where she's figuring in, you know, where is she... Is she, um, is she chief of staff? Is she, you know, like, where is she? Yeah, she she would be a great chief of staff. I love her. And she's fucking smart. I'm happy about it. I I am too. And it's like, I remember when, you know, Obama became president. And um, I just, they walked out there, him and Michelle and Malia and Sasha. And I was like, oh my God, I'm so proud to be American. Like, I... There are some moments I, I really remember. Like, I remember when Clinton said the, the word gay and lesbian the first time, included us in the no matter you're black, and we were all like, oh, my God! Like, it was just one word, but it was like... Yeah, yeah. We're yeah. equal. And then Obama was like, oh, my God, this country's great. Like, I really thought... I was... I was... I, I just can't believe where we are now as compare and that i was so naive to think right. oh if we could get an african-american president you know we're going to keep moving forward with this racism well, and it's not you know, it's, yeah well it's it's a constant struggle right? right like you can you can emancipate but then you have like reconstruction jim crow follows segregation like all this stuff like you know, for as for as much progress as you make, people will always have a backlash. Right. You just have to fight. You have to be the backlash to the backlash. You know, yeah. in order to like push us along. Because in the end, there's more there's more of us than them. Yeah. And like you know, I think this country is changing. It's going through through definite like spasms mm-hmm. to do it. But like you know, the road the road ain't the road ain't easy. Yeah. You know, the road ain't easy, and it's definitely aging me. Oh my God, I know I can't sleep. Now, all right, here's my two last questions. This is what I ask. Sure. I, I ask everyone. Number one, we're very pro mental health. That You mentioned that you had an episode. I suffer from depression, anxiety, yeah. ADHD. I, I got it all. What, what do you take antidepressants? What do you do for your mental health? What I do for my mental health is I don't take antidepressants. However, I do take THC and uh, CBD. And that Me too, baby! Feel... Wait, have you ever taken yeah, antidepressants? Yeah, yeah. I have never taken them, and here's why. Because they, the, the therapist, and, 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 and of course, deals with race, but like, um, they don't give Black people medicine at the same um, um, rate that they do white people. So like, What? Yeah. Like, like for pain medicine... They give white people. That's why white people are more addicted to opioids than than, uh, than black people are, because they give you all opioids more frequently than they give us opioids. Because they think one, we're faking it. Two, we have a higher threshold for pain, which I mean, I mean emotionally maybe, but like, like that's that's a real deal thing. I 
Cannot believe I never knew that. Yeah. That is disgusting. Yeah. That is dis- yeah. that makes me fucking physically ill. Yeah, truth, just truth. But wow. You know, yeah. So there's Fuck. that. Okay. Yeah, there's that. Um, but I think I just I really enjoy THC CBD. I it's know. Me effective. too. Yeah. It just takes those those fucking noises in my head. Right. Right. Say this and that, and it dulls them. It just right, and them. it's also like, like and yeah. you know, like I've been in so much therapy. I've been in cognitive behavioral therapy and regular therapy, mm-hmm. and and just saying, just learning. I learned how to identify the feeling and f- figure out: is it real, or is it something I'm making mm-hmm. up? Is it made out of fear? Mm-hmm. Is it? And then it's like, all right, bye, take care, done with yeah. you. You know. <laughs> um, okay. Be good. The, the podcast is called Kill Me Now because, as you know, everything annoys me. So, uh, and I'm always like, oh, my God, kill me now. I can't take it. So what pisses you off more than anything, like, makes you fucking so angry, crazy, mad? Um, my home state of Texas right now. That, that just really gets, it irks me. It gets under my skin. I can't fucking take Texas. And it's hard to turn my back on my home state, despite all of the, the willful ignorance, the not wearing masks, the sending children back to school, just the willful Head and wanton destruction. fuck face, Cruz. Cruz. How are we going to get him out? How the fuck are we going to get that motherfucker out? Well, it's it, when it comes to statewide competition, Beto doesn't have him quite yet. Right. The state is, turn, the, the state is turning purple, which okay. is wonderful. Right, but I'd say right. one more cycle, and this fuckhead is out. I I think it's it's going to be a scandal. scandal. It's a scandal. Yeah, it's got to be something. It's, oh my god! You something. know he's fucking fucking other women. <laughs> There's something going, and that beard is so fucking. He's such a fucking asshole. The fact that he called his wife ugly, and she's still like, eh, "Fuck you, you piece of shit," and his kids hate him. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I hate him. Oh, they won't even touch him. Yeah, they won't touch him. Yeah, fucker. Well, he's yeah. I, 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 so it's not a great time for my state. When I was a child, I had, I was lucky because I had people like Ann Richards. Ann Richards. Ann Richards I loved Ann Richards. One of my agents worked for her. Uh, really? I became an agent and I love her. I love her daughter, uh, Cecile Richards. Yeah. I love, I, <laughs> oh, when she became governor, I was like, wow. You know, but you know, yeah. now look at us. We have that. But ima- okay. imagine that when, when I'm, when I'm a kid, you know, I've got like, that's who I'm, right. that's my governor. That's who right. you're looking up to. And they're like, right. yeah, you know, we, we're a great state, you know, like this is pretty awesome. That my, Did I you see the one room. person show her, the one person show? Yes. The, yes. So good. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Was so good. Holland, um, Holland Taylor, baby. She's fucking great. Yes. Yeah. 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 For sure. Um, I saw it. I lived it. It was awesome. <laughs> Jordan, I could talk to you all day. I can't thank you enough. I'm so glad this finally worked out. Um, you're doing a, you do a show with one of my other faves, Michelle Buteau, who, by the way, oh I told her this, but I find, I think she's one of the most beautiful women I've ever seen. Of course. The I mean, like she is beautiful, like yeah. a work of art. Um, and that's coming from a nice lesbo. So, um, <laughs> so you no, do a show true. on dub, dub, is it, is it NPR, WMYC? Um, so, so, um, the, 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 the podcast that we did was, was on WNYC. We're finding a new home for it now. Okay. However, and I think you're already booked, but I'm now the head writer for uh, Drew Barrymore show. And I. I no, you're wait. not. Yeah. My son yeah. works there. Uh, what? Henry, what's happening? Now? What's happening? Henry's the PA. <laughs> Henry Callahan, go, baby. That's I'm so funny. Forward. I better be booked, I'm but I'm not forward. booked. I'm not booked. I don't have anything on my fucking schedule. Jordan, can you write me something? Write me a recurring thing, please. I'll do Man on the Street. I fucking love her. Of course. You know, when no. you have an eight, you're going to need like an eight foot microphone. Uh, I know, I heard. But yeah, yeah. But I'm down. You're done. Yeah. yeah done. Oh, done. Mazel tov. Jason Kurtz. Do you know Jason? Yes. Yes. Jason was 
I work, he was an intern when I worked at Rosie. He was the wow. kid's nanny. He was Henry's nanny one Come summer on. here in Provincetown. I, he, I love Jordan. That's fucking great. I know. I'm excited. I'm really excited. You bet, Jordan. Yeah. I better be booked. I'm talking. To, yeah. Yes. On it like a bonnet. Don't and worry about it. Say hi to Henry. Say hi to Henry. He's doing. You know, he loves it. He fucking loves it. I'm gonna reach out. I, I right. love this. Yeah, I like yesterday was my first day, so this is it's all happening. All right, it's gonna be a great show too. Yeah, Ellen's down El Tubos. Um, <laughs> all right, where can when where can I, where can people find you? Yes, please on Twitter at Jordan Carlos. So we're on Instagram at the Realer Jordan Carlos, which is just a stupid. Joke. Well, I know. But, um, yeah, 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 yeah. But that's that's me. Find me. I'm always on IG, put it, posting pictures of my darling little children, Aww, um, because people seem to like those better than pictures. I know. Yeah, so, I know. so it's fine. It's fine. But um, yeah, that's where I'm at, and uh, I'm going to start posting from from the Drew show as well. I'm excited to do that. And uh, and you're going to yeah. get Judy Gold on the Drew show. So that's great. Take it's care. Goddamn right. Thank you so much for listening to part two of Kill Me Now with my friend Jordan Carlos. How fucking great is he? If you like the show, I mean, you know what? I, I'm not saying that if you like the show, because how can you not like the show? Just do me a favor, subscribe to the show and leave a review. It helps more people find this amazing podcast. Five stars only, please. And speaking of five stars, if you have not purchased my book, yes, I can say that when they come for the comedians, we're all in trouble. You are in big, fat, hairy trouble. It is a great book. I'm getting great reviews. Comics love it. Uh, Non-comics love it. Comedy fans love it. And the audio book, which I narrate, was featured in New and Noteworthy in the New York Times book review. And my parents are dead. Okay? So do me a favor. Go and buy the book. I need the money. And it's really good. I'm really proud of it. Robin Bronk, I mentioned this last year. She's the head of the Creative Coalition. And she told, she literally said to me that I feel like this book is the game of life version of the First Amendment. Okay? So there you go. Really would mean a lot to me if you would check it out. And you can order it uh, on the homepage of judygold.com. There's all these links. You can get it wherever books are sold. If you buy it from Amazon, please do a review, a five-star review, because there's a couple of haters who, you know, have to give me one star just to try to bring down my, you know, my star here. So go, go, please, please do it. Please, I need you. Also, follow me on Twitter. Follow me on Instagram for all upcoming viral shows, outdoor shows I'm performing in Provincetown um, into sept- the first week of, up until the first week of September, or second week of September, I don't know, Labor Day. And any dates, just follow me at, at Judy Gold, J-E-W-D-Y-G-O-L-D, you know, like Jew Gold. And thank you again so much for listening. Be well, be safe, wear a mask, vote. And as we always say, so long. <laughs> Uh, everything was wonderful. I'll see you soon. Thank you for the visit. So long. Uh...